Both evolution and creation scientists have observed and agree that there is great variety within each species. Darwin noticed this variety and adaptability among finches. He noticed that the finch's beaks varied in size and shape, and that the beak's features affected the survivability of the finch. Today we notice a great variety of dogs. It is believed that all 450 breeds of dogs present today had a common ancestor. Most scientists believe that this ancestor was very similar to the present-day wolf. Scientists also witness natural selection, or survival of the fittest. Evolutionists and creationists agree that those animals that are the strongest, healthiest, or most adaptive to their environment are more likely to survive and go on to reproduce. The weaker animals which are unable to adapt are less likely to survive. We also observe gene mutations occurring. The DNA in all living organisms contains all the genetic information of life. Sometimes an error is introduced in this genetic code. This is called a mutation. Mutations often cause disease and can be induced by radiation, chemical agents, or replication errors. Mutations really do occur. They make all kinds of changes in genes. Uh, birth defects, disease, disease organisms, they're great at explaining the, the origin of disease, death, and disaster. Not at all at explaining the origin of something new, uh, some new trait that never exists. All the mutations we know about are only changes in genes that already exist. Darwin observed many things in, in nature. He was a good naturalist, a good observer of information. What he saw was various uh, plants and animals altering somewhat uh, through, through adaptation, through variation. Uh, he saw them uh, change. We never see one basic type of something changing into something else. That has never been observed in science. Or in, in genetics. It just has never been observed. What we see is variety. Variety happens, adaptation happens. Evolution doesn't happen. Mutations, natural selection, adaptation. These are some of the observations that both evolutionists and creationists agree upon. But in spite of the agreements, there are substantial differences.
And so the debate rages on. I mean, you have, you have such, such a wide variety of, of life. And I don't think it's possible for one person, I mean, no matter how powerful he might be, to just snap his fingers and create life. It has to come out naturally over millions of years, probably. Uh, I don't believe in the theory of evolution. Uh, you know, more and more, um, even secular scientists uh, are changing their viewpoints uh, because the evidence doesn't support their conclusions. Half of me believes in the theory of evolution, probably because that's what I was taught. Four years of studies, unfortunately, um, have kind of brainwashed me towards evolution. We begin where evolutionists say it all began. With the Big Bang. And the evolution of the universe. One interesting aspect of evolutionary theory is that it's such, it's such a powerful theory and it exercises such a strong hold over the imaginations of scientists that they've applied it outside the biological realm. They've applied it to inanimate things as well. They've applied it to the chemical elements, to stars, to galaxies. Uh, it's said that, um, that the universe itself is evolving. Evolutionary thinking is applied to most areas of science. The field of evolutionary cosmology proposes that the universe is the result of a random explosion. Some 15 to 18 billion years ago. There are no examples that I've ever seen where an explosion produced an increase in order. Explosions are destructive. They cause spontaneous degeneration, not spontaneous generation. Scientists recognize that all known explosions decrease order and structure and increase chaos.